So you want to be an umpire, huh? Come on down. Show us what you got. Let me see your strike. Strike so here you one? Get that? Yeah, strike okay. one. Let me see that strike. Strike one! There you go. All right, how about a ball? Can we get a ball? Ball one! There you go, wow. You're looking sharp. How about if he's safe? What do you think, safe? Safe! Okay, give me an out. Out! There you go, nice banger. So who invited you here to the to the Wendell's Mr. Time? Sammy and Mr. Hunter. Okay, you like to say thank you to them? Thank you. All righty. All right, so here we are at the Wendell Stat School, week four, and we have Major League umpire Jerry Lane. So Jerry, tell me how everything's been developing the last couple weeks. Well, so this is the time of the school that everything starts to click. Uh, they understand where they need to be and repeating things and repeating things and repeating things. It's all starting to sink in. So right. we're starting right. to see some good quality umpiring right now. Okay, so it's all coming together for them and it's, everything. It's coming together nicely for the uh, student. Um, I think the student feels less uh, pressure because we're more comfortable. When you repeat yourself out there on the field, it starts to become natural. Okay, all right. If I came up to you, an 18-year-old kid, and I said, hey, I want to go to umpire school. Go to college. Go to college. <laughs> <laughs> if I have a young man that comes and says, I really want to give this a shot, I, I think you need to have multiple choices that you can fall back on. Right. And if you come in as an 18-year-old, it's it's all well and good. But um, if it doesn't work out, you have to go back. And once you have to go back, it's hard to get back into. Okay. Like college. Right. So the perfect student for me would be somebody that has a couple years of college at least. He can be 18 years old or he can be 20, 21 years old. But to have a insurance policy, so to speak, to fall back on in right. case it doesn't work out. A plan B. A plan B. And that particular door is always available to go right. back through. If you're 18 years old and have nothing more than just your high school background, then at the age of 20, 21, it seems to be a little more difficult to go back, back in, right. with uh, repeating, you know, what a lot of your classmates in high school, you know, have already completed. Okay. All righty. I mean, that's uh, some great advice, and everybody thinks being a Major League umpire is such a glamorous job, but you do a lot of sacrificing during Well, this. the thing of it is, I was one of those 18 years old, 18-year-olds, uh, and I uh, was fortunate enough to make it. Right. But I look at what would have happened had I not made it, and that's what I, I, I base my opinion on. Is I'm very thankful that I made it, and I just uh, think that a smart thing to do is for an 18 year old is to continue his education and have something that they can revert to. Okay, so you're hedging your butt. Hold up. So you're hedging your butt. That's what you're doing. Okay, all right, well thank you Jerry, thank you for being on. I appreciate it so much. My pleasure. Good luck. Thank you. Alrighty. All right, so here we are at week four. And behind me, we still have some control games. Week four, you're, you're having to start put together. They have uh, assigners, they have people coming in and checking you out. During the week, the umpires have been getting some live games with the Seabreeze team, where they're practicing right now on field three. Behind me here, we have the Seabreeze baseball guys. They're starting their spring training right now. So now what's happening is then we're gonna put the baseball players on the field. We're gonna put umpires in there. And now they have a live game. We got guys running from the practice field to the live game, to the cages. They're all over the place. And this is the week we put it all together. We have people here that are from different leagues looking for umpires. Perfect game was here. And we'll talk about that later. Thank you. 
My name is Oluwafemi. I'm from Nigeria. I'm here to learn in a professional way at the Wedesta Upper High School. So what are the things have you learned here? To be sincere with myself, I knew nothing right. when I was coming. But on getting to this place, I know I've gained a lot. It's a school that I can recommend for anybody that wants to go into umpiring anywhere in the world. This is a school to be. What is the one thing that has been a little hard for you to try to grasp? One of the major things that's a little bit hard for me is the rotation of two-man umpire. Where I came from, which is Nigeria, I can state precisely, I only do one-man umpire. So, I mean, you're going to take all this knowledge and take it back to Nigeria and teach everybody else? Yes, that was the, the agreement between me and my sponsor. Right. If, I, if I come to this place to come and learn from the professional umpires, right. so that when I go back to Nigeria and Africa at large, I can pass the knowledge that I've gathered. You want to send a shout out to anybody in your language and tell them all about umpire school? <laughs> uh, firstly, I would like to thank my sponsor in person of David Dukant, Umpire Without Border. I want to say a very big thank you for for, for giving me this kind of a opportunity to come down to this place. And I want to thank my family home in Nigeria. Ishe Umiyo, Aba Agbe Okay, all right, well, thank you. Hopefully next year we'll have two more umpires or three more umpires from Africa. Yes, hopefully, hopefully. hopefully. God willing, that is what's one of the plans I'm trying to, to do here so that we, we can have multiple umpires from Nigeria, from Africa, that we attend this school, so that in the nearest future, we can have Africa umpire at the international tournament and competitions. Okay. Maybe in the nearest future, MLB, oh, MLB from Africa. You never know. We never know. You. All right. Brandon Lawson, yes. Brandon sir. Lawson. Olua Femi. He is here because of Brandon. So Brandon, tell me how you guys, uh, how this all happened. Uh, well, I'm, I'm only just part of it. I, I'm not the whole reason, but uh, about four years ago, we met through Facebook. Uh, I just happened to see a couple of the pictures he had posted, some of the training classes and stuff he had done, and I loved it. it what I saw in the photos was the genuine love and passion for baseball that I shared. And I knew that I wanted to reach out to him and share that with him, that I see what you are doing. It's awesome. I love it. And uh, we just kind of started talking and became friends. and. Uh, one thing led to another and he shared with me his dream. Yeah, I believe he said, my ultimate dream is to go to Florida and USA to pro umpire school. And if I ever do it on that day, I will be the happiest man on earth. Is that what you said? Yeah. And here he is, he's doing it. Here he is. And uh, I, I'm actually a 2010 graduate of Wendelstead here. So uh, it's awesome to kind of be back. It's kind of like a homecoming for me a little bit. And then uh, when he shared with me, his dream was to do this. I knew I wanted to help in some way. And uh, like I said, it, it's not all me. There's certainly other groups out there. I know Umpires Without Borders has done great and, okay. and uh, helped them with a lot of stuff and things like that. So it's it's certainly not a solo mission. There's a lot of, it takes a community to, to really help out. And it's amazing to see him living out his dream. And he, I, I know for a fact, they've got something special working in Nigeria with baseball and with other sports and stuff. And okay. it's amazing to see it all starting to come to life. What did you take from the school that you're applying into your everyday life or the job? Oh man, confidence is, is a huge one. Um, I know but the confidence level that I experienced from, I went from here to here, coming, you know, my, my confidence level shot through the roof and that applied on the field and then in the regular life as well. And uh, I actually, I got off the field in 2019 was my last season and I did accomplish my, my goal or my dream. I wanted to umpire pro baseball and I got to fill in on one pro baseball game in 2019 in Louisville, Kentucky. So kind of kind of did it, fulfilled my dream and whatnot. And then I uh, actually still am connected to the game. I work with ump attire, so I'm able to stay involved in ump umpiring through that and uh, you know come out to some of the camps and the clinics and things like that. So, And then uh, also involved with Wounded Warrior Umpire Academy. So that gives me a chance to stay involved with umpiring and stuff too. And then I love Love supporting these guys and their uh, Ikiti Kiti Little League in Nigeria. Yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> love, love seeing it all. So I, I still get to stay involved in other ways other than being on the field and whatnot. And uh, you know the the school here, it, it definitely it stays with you for life. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Up. You're welcome. Good.
Plate work preparation checklist. There it is. Okay, so now they're in the cages. Now we're past the stage of ball, strike, that's done with. Now we're adding into it the check swing, the third strike. The instructors are looking in, making sure you're tracking with your eyes. Are you flinching? Are you blinking? Is your eyes blinking? Are you moving? Stuff like that. This is what they're looking for. Week four, you should be putting it all together. It's still gonna come all together. And that's what they're doing behind here. All right, so we have Casey. Casey James, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. All right, so you're one of the instructors here at the Windows Dad School. Yeah. Where are you umpiring this year? Just finished up this past season, I was in the Texas League. So I should be heading back out to the Texas League for this next coming season. Okay. What year did you graduate? Yeah, I came to school in 2018. Okay. Uh, last year was my first year on staff. Um, you know, it's a really special place. It's really cool learning the history of this place. You know, learning about Harry Winnostat Chief. You know, it's, it's, it's really special. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of umpires have come through these, these, these fields and, and kind of done the same path that we're doing right now. It's, it's special, it's a special place. Such a gl glamorous life of being an umpire. I mean, there's a lot of things that you also give up with your family and stuff. Yeah, you miss you miss birthdays. If you've got a family, and most of my family's birthdays are, are during the summer, so I miss them for the last five years. Uh, you miss siblings' sports games. You miss siblings graduating. We're able to get some time off for weddings, so we haven't missed any weddings yet, thank goodness. <laughs> you know, but you know, yeah, we miss those special events. You know, I've got a niece now. My sister's got a kid, and you know, miss all her birthdays. You know, so you miss a lot of things. But you know, the the dream of being a big league umpire is something we chase and it's something that you've got to put your mind to and just keep striving for. Okay. So, I mean, did you play ball before before umpiring? I did. I played some college baseball. Yeah. Um, and umpiring was a way to make some extra money. Um, and then this kind of opened its door to me and I took the chance and haven't looked back since. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for being on. Absolutely. All right. All right. I love it. All right, we're gonna see how, how easy this is. Hold on. Hold on, let me adjust. Let me adjust real quick. Let me get in the slot. Start. All right. Get it on the Sit. Strike four. There you go. 
That's a good straight call. But we're gonna work on time. I'm gonna tap you in the back when you call. Okay? All right, here we go. Don't come up until I tap you on the back. one you blew today. It's the second one. How you doing? No, you're good. How are you? So you're the guy providing all the food now? I'm the guy helping the guy. Helping the guy, helping the guy? So tell us what you got, uh, what you got out here? So we got pulled pork sandwiches. Mm -hmm. We got uh, chicken salad sandwiches. We got grilled chicken salads, Caesar salad. Um, grilled chicken sandwich and cheeseburgers. Okay, all right. That's a well-balanced lunch. Pretty good. <laughs> All right, so behind me, they do provide the lunch, um, even though Greg is not here. Miss you, Greg. Darren Brown, uh, Troy, Ohio. I'm representing the Frontier League, and we're looking for some young umpires who wish to travel for the summer. Okay. Going to learn three man and going to get better. All righty. How's the, how's the lay of the land looking so far? Oh, I see some great umpires out here. You're young and a little raw, but that's but that's part of being going to an umpire school. So you okay. Kind of learn and get better. One of the questions that one of my guys had was that, does the school help you get a job? So they're looking for yeah, umpires. Prospect League is here. I also represent the Great Lakes Summer Collegiate League uh -huh. commissioner. So being here, I can see some young umpires in our area that could use the work that see you know good pitching and good hitting and seeing quality baseball so they can get, get better. Okay, basically. all right. If you had any advice for some of these guys out here, what would you say to them? I would say work as much as you can, as often as you can, at as high a level as you can, and I always say be a thief. Steal all the great things that the good umpires around you do and avoid the bad things. And yeah. if you do that, you'll you'll move up and you'll, you'll get better over time. We have a saying as umpires, you can't hide a bad umpire and you can't hide a good one either, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's pretty so, glaring. So if you're, a, if you're a bad umpire, you won't be umpire for long. But if you're a good umpire, you'll be moving up pretty fast. Yeah, and like I said, I, if this is refreshing. I, I really enjoy the sense of camaraderie amongst the campers. That was something I, I just I, that struck me when I got here. So watching these guys interact and, and talking about umpiring and, and the minor, the little details the umpires are talking about, it's just kind of cool and yeah, refreshing. They're cheering each other on right, and right. family. Backing and each other up. Yeah. There's a family atmosphere here. Yeah. Which is I mean, the fourth awesome. week, I see guys over here ready. You know, they're like, oh, we got a couple more days. They're taking pictures. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you know, I'm going to miss you guys. And right. seeing you every day. You That's know? awesome. So it's, uh, it's, it's different. All right. Well, thank you for being on. Hey, no problem. Take right. care. Okay. So we're at Wendelstadt here, and we have Scott Harris. He is with Perfect Game. So what are you doing here, Scott? Looking for umpires. Looking for umpires. That's a good place as any to not find any. Absolutely. Right. Perfect game is growing. 29 states. You added how many this year? Seven, I believe? Six or seven states, uh, six countries, and one more coming. Wow, look at that. One of, one of my viewers was like, can they help you find a job? I mean, even if you don't make it into the pro ranks, if you don't be making it into the college ranks, Perfect Game is looking for umpires. Anything from 8 to 18. All right. It's a platform that you'll have an opportunity to go out and umpire on your craft, learn, and see some good baseball at the same time. Okay. They can go into perfect game, practice that craft, master it, and then hopefully in a year or two come back over here and maybe make it into the minor leagues. Absolutely. All right. All right. So not, not only the minors, um, we're all, there's opportunities in college ball, in the high A. Uh -huh. NJCAA, and of course the NCAA, Division 2, 3, and one. Right. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, how do they get in touch with you? S. Harris at perfectgame.org. All right, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right.
check that, please. John, did he go? Yes, he did. Yeah. Show the count. Yeah. Even if you don't know what it is, just show something. One, two. All right. Listen up, right? We gotta show the count, right? Come on, Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Uh -huh. All right. Rubber. Set. Three, three. Alright, left handed hitter, here we go. Nathaniel Anthony Franco, I'm from Austin, Texas. Been this is my third year umpiring and came on out here to get better as a high school umpire and a college umpire, hopefully. And you know, if I do good enough, then hopefully I'll get a job. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so I mean, what is the one thing that you learned here that's like, oh, wowed you a little bit? Oh, um, really getting into the proper t uh, terminology. You know, using proper terminology with coaches and when referring to rules and things like that, you know, it really makes you a lot more confident when you can talk to a coach and use proper terminology rather than, you know, just saying, you know, well, this runner may have left early and may have left that. Well, you know, you can use proper terminology and that's really helped out and, you know, me being a lot more confident as an umpire for sure. All right. So you want to send a shout out to anybody? Uh, shout out to my mom and dad and my little brother. You know, love right. those guys and, you know, without them, I wouldn't be here. All right. So, All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Major League umpire, 28 years, correct? Uh, this will be my 29th year. 29th year, year, 29 yeah. years. Yep. Ed Hidcock, one of my instructors when I was here, and my fondest memory was that line drive that you hit at me at first base. I went about four feet up in the air. Believe it or not, I get up. I called it fair. Ed had me, he asked me, how did you know it was fair? I said, I really didn't. <laughs> but uh, umpire preservation That's first. Right. <laughs> so it was, yeah. a, it was a good They answer. always say, uh, you know, fair foul, catch, no catch. But really the first thing is umpire preservation. Don't get in the way <laughs> of the play. So Don't get in the way. That's the first thing to do. Then worry about the rest after All right. that. So, I mean, so what are, you guys, what are you doing here? Well, you know, this is, uh, I've taught here 39 years. This is my 40th year if you include when I was a student. I, I couldn't be around this year as much because I was dealing with some concussion, rehabilitation, and uh, health issues. But uh, I definitely wanted to come out the last couple of days here to see the guys and see how okay. everything's going. So I certainly certainly do miss it, there's no question. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, this is my 20th anniversary of here. I was a student here in 2003. You always come back, everybody's welcoming, everybody's cheering each other on, and it, it the umpire bug hit me. Just yeah. a little bit. Give yeah. me a little. It gave me a little nip, and it made, made me want to go back out there and say, "Hey, you know what? I can do this again." We we miss Chief. Chief. Oh yeah. We miss Chief. What do you think Chief would be saying right now if you look down on this oh. this whole thing? Tell you what, the field has changed. They got uh, uh, now we have indoor like pitching nice machines, right? And uh, no, Chief would be very very proud of what Hunter has done and kept the kept the kept the legacy going. Uh, being part of this school is just really, really amazing. It's, okay. uh, I've, I've been very fortunate to have so many years of teaching umpires and right. uh, meeting people. And, uh, and and you were you were right when you said that the camaraderie with umpires. It doesn't matter if you're a little league umpire or a major league umpire. We all know what we go through and what it right. takes to run a game and how difficult the job is. And uh, so no, it, it's uh, it's it really is a uh, a camaraderie and family that people just probably don't understand a lot. Yeah, I was I was talking to Jerry Lane and it, saying a lot of the um, the sacrifice that you make. I mean, everybody sees, wow, Ed Hickok, Major League umpire. Wow, that must be such a great. But there's a lot of traveling. There's a lot of missing your family. Yeah. A lot of sacrifice that your family has to do without you. You're, you're not making millions. Being a major league umpire, I mean, you make a good wage. Over a career, you probably make a million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, you don't make it per, per year. But, right. But you're right. You know, even though this is my uh, 29th season um, umpiring in major league games, it's just that 14 years I was, a, you know, minor league umpire. So there, there's a lot of times where you weren't making good money, or you're, you, you were traveling by car. <laughs> And it's a tough because really you have a lifestyle that your that your wife's basically a, a stay-at-home mom and a single parent for for six months a year. Right, right. So it's very 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 difficult. You know, you miss your kids' birthdays. You have to do it by Zoom. And mm -hmm. uh, no, there's 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 a lot of things that go into it that people do do not realize. It's tough. And, and I'm finding as it as as I get older, I, right. I just turned 60. So uh, as you get older, it's tougher to do. 
Right. And, uh, so not only the, the grind of traveling and everything that comes off the field, and then you have to worry about the stuff that to deal with on the field, getting right. your plays right and getting your pitches right. So uh, it's a very difficult job. And you know what? That's uh, that's why they pay us what they pay us, because right. it, it is a tough job. Right. But uh, it's a very hey, rewarding job, too. You know, okay. it, it provides a fantastic living for your family. I've, I've been able to meet five five different presidents and uh, stuff up. like that's kind of kind of cool. So wow. there, there's perks like that that come along with the, with being a major league umpire. But uh, it, it it's been a good ride. I, I got another year or two to go and call it a career. I, think that's I, I mean, we we had some of these instructors that are here just get promoted. There was three of them. They got promoted from the Wendell Stat School. There were our former instructors that are now going to be major leaguers. I mean, seeing these guys get promoted, do you, do you think? Do you think baseball's in good hands, the oh, umpire? They're, they're, they're in very good hands. You know, if you look at the MLB staff, I bet a quarter to half of them uh, have went through this school. Probably even more than half went through the school, but probably more than a quarter has taught at this school at some, some point. And, uh, you know, teaching at an um, umpire school is so much of an advantage because it makes you get in the rule book. It makes right. you know the rules inside and out. And uh, it, it really pull-votes guys to progress through the minor leagues. Right. Nice. So it's good to see a lot of our staff become major league umpires because they really worked hard and really deserve it. Absolutely. All right. Well, yeah. thank you, Ed. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. All you right. Guys take care. Yes. All right, everybody. As you can see, fields are empty now. School's over. Everybody's gone home. But now everybody thinks spring training is the beginning. It's not. It's the umpire schools that start in January. That's when baseball starts. In my closeout, I'd like to say uh, thank you to Hunter and his crew. They did a phenomenal job this year. Um, the instructors were on point. The students were absorbing. I wish you guys all the best. Good luck this year. The 2023 class, I like to say for me, for my show, I like to dedicate this to Greg, who was the one that um, fed the Wendell Stat students for over 20 years. He's a family member. He was a friend, soft-spoken, nice guy, great food. So guys, Good luck this season for you umpires, for you players. You'll be starting soon. And uh, as we always say here on Who's Our First, keep swinging. If you like the show, please do me a favor, subscribe, right? Right, you see it? It's right there. Subscribe, share, like, and don't forget, put that bell on. It'll ding you when I put something else on, all right?